Photography has four most important elements: camera, light, sets and props, and post-processing. Camera is the most basic equipment. Previously, with the help of the optics theory, camera can reflect images on a film. Then you can develop it. As the technology develops, easy carry compact digital camera, SLR camera, MILC camera are gradually coming out. Imaging of these cameras no longer depends on film, but chips, such as CMOS. Although we can see lots of settings and buttons all over the various cameras, there are just the three key settings: shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Shutter speed refers to how long the shutter will be opened. That is the time duration about getting the film exposed. The longer duration is, the more exposure it can get. This 60 means the shutter will be opened for one sixtieth of a second. If there's one, it means the shutter will be opened for one second. Some cameras have a B shutter, by the way. For after pressing the shutter button, you can control the exposure time at will. If the camera is handheld while shooting, the slower the shutter speed you set. The easier you will get the blurry photos due to your shaking hands. Normally, one twenty-fifth of a second is faster than shaking hands, which can be regarded as a safe shutter speed. A well-trained man can stably hold camera for one sixtieth of a second or even longer. If we need to shoot some fast-moving objects, we have to switch the shutter speed to faster ones, like one thousandth of a second, two thousandths of a second. Aperture refers to the size of the hole letting light in, using parameter like f equals 5.6 to represent. These numbers can be seen on a camera lens. The smaller value, the bigger aperture, and more light intake. The size of aperture not only affects exposure but also depth of field. The bigger value, the bigger depth of field. The little disparity of clarity between the photo's foreground and background. The smaller value, the smaller depth of field. ISO. Actually, this concept is from the period of traditional film. It refers to film's sensitivity towards light, and present-day digital camera inherits this term. The bigger ISO, the bigger sensitivity, the bigger particles on the photo, and more noises. Smaller ISO indicates lower sensitivity, and the photo will be less grainy and clean. 100 is the most commonly used ISO. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO jointly affect the result. If we need a photo with a general exposure, as for moving object, we need to decide which shutter speed we should use first, and then the aperture. This is called the shutter priority. If we want a background blurry photo, we should decide the aperture first, then the shutter speed. This is called the aperture priority. When in the extreme condition, the combination of shutter speed and aperture can't bring out the ideal exposure, we can adjust the ISO, which would probably sacrifice the exquisiteness of the photo. You might find this command on some cameras called shutter aperture priority. In the field of photography, light is like the pigment of a painter: no light, no shooting. There are three kinds of light. Natural light, ambient light, and artificial light. Natural light refers to the direct light or reflected light from the sun or other stars. Ambient light is the light the scenario already has, such as lamp light, fireplace light, and etc. Because of the strong variability of these two lights, they are used carefully in the commercial photography. Artificial light, since it is from professional lighting equipment, it has stable light source and a strong adjustability. Nowadays, there are various kinds of artificial lighting equipment. It is hard to clarify them precisely, but by their functions, we can sort them out into four types. Photo flood light has white beam. With its projection, the spot's highlight area has low light intensity, and the shadow area has low sharpness, and its tone is not that dim as well. It is the main lighting equipment of indoor shooting, which is commonly used as main light source. Spotlight can project a high directing beam, generating an extremely bright highlight area and a sharp dim-toned shadow area, which is usually used as the complement of photo flood light. Umbrella reflector can generate a softer and less directional light than photo flood light. It is commonly used to produce soft light. Flashlight. Its light is not continuous. It can release a strong light ray within a specific time frame. It can be installed on a camera or connected with wires away from the camera. So, how to use this light equipment? First step: 
setting the key light. Using photo flat light as a key light source, its place depends on what effect you want, but usually it is placed beside the subject, which is against with 45 degrees. Its horizontal position is about 70 centimeters higher than the camera. Second step, adding the fill light. The role of a fill light is to add some light for highlighting the details in the shadow area. Since the key light should be at the dominant position, it determines the shadow. Therefore, the fill light must be weaker than the key light. The fill light should be directly positioned right beside the camera to avoid a new set of shadow and also to reduce the contrast of a shadow. Third step, adding the backlight. At last, adding a photo flashlight or spotlight for illuminating the background of the subject in order to spell out the subject from the background. These three steps we mentioned above are the most basic light settings. According to the actual needs, you can add more kinds of lighting equipment from different kinds of angles. In order to get your ideal lighting, you need to adjust the light repeatedly on set. But if there are some established references, you can make it quicker and more convenient. Let's check about those different lights. Front Bottom Side Top side Rim Back Top As for commercial photography, if there's no proper shooting circumstance, putting up a set is needed to ensure a nice shooting outcome. In order to make the object stand out, we frequently use solid color as the background, especially white. A backdrop can wipe out lots of unnecessary cracks, making the background more natural. The simple background you set should be big enough and seamless. This will save you lots of troubles in post-processing. Normal objects like scotch tape and fishing line can help to hold the subject, and they are almost invisible in front of the camera. So, they are frequently used in the commercial photography. If you want to make it easy and simple, mini shooting box would be an ideal choice because it can save the trouble of light setting. You don't have to use the pro gears. Some daily use items could be a good helper. In the film shooting time, a photographer could use various external tools, such as filters, to change the photo. Now, with the development of computer technology, you can do a lot more fantastic effects on the computer. Photographers use software like Photoshop to do the post-processing. This becomes an indispensable step for modern photography. Although, software can make lots of effects happen, but too many changes sometimes make the photo look fake. Thus, you need to be very careful when you do the post-processing and the plan before you take the photo and the post-processing. Most people are just fascinated by camera at the beginning, then fall in love with photography, because it has endless charm.